Welcome back to the channel. We have a very busy day today. We are starting some of our seeds inside. First, we have to go out and feed all the animals. And while we're out here, we're gonna do a hive check, see how our bees are doing. After that, we'll introduce you to all of our animals for anyone who's new to the channel. And then we'll head back inside and start our seeds. As you can see, the pigs have really done a number on the fence this year. The plan this spring is to reinforce actual wood across the bottom. This is just a temporary makeshift kind of patch because they've chewed a hole in the fence and they've gotten out quite a few times and luckily our friendly neighbors help us get them back if we're not home. So yeah, we have some upkeep to do on the pig pen this year. I have a hard time trying to get the pigs to take their medication because they do not like the taste of it. This time I put it between two crackers with some peanut butter before I was putting the medication between two crackers and they took it the first time but then realized that the medication was in it so they wouldn't take it anymore. This time I covered it in peanut butter and they seemed to take it fine. The other option I was going to use was cheese. Put the medication on some cheese and roll it up and give it to them. But the peanut butter seemed to work fine so I guess we'll leave it at that. We've been fermenting our feed for just over a year now. On top of being good for the chickens, it actually stretches your bag of feed a little bit more, probably by about 20-25% because you're soaking it so the feed is actually swelling up, which is making it bigger using less amount of feed. So it's a win-win for everyone, financially and for the chickens. You guys aren't supposed to be in there. The pond's still frozen for these guys, so they try to bathe in the buckets. Dark 
one's laying. Nice. Our chickens just started laying again regularly. We didn't get any eggs from them for, I think, December, January, and a little bit into February. So they just started laying again, which is very exciting. We've got some nice green ones this year. We've also set our first hatch already. That one in the incubator last Wednesday, so we should be looking to get some new chickens within the next three weeks. That's also very exciting. And on top of the exciting news of the chicken eggs, it looks like our ducks have started laying again, because there's a duck egg down here. And there's actually another duck egg over here. So I'll pick that up, and after we're done incubating our chickens, I'm gonna start saving the duck eggs and we'll do our first hatch of ducklings this year. For anyone who's interested in the difference between a chicken egg and a duck egg, visually speaking, the size difference, first of all, the shell on the outside of a duck egg is incredibly thick, a lot thicker than a chicken egg. The yolk inside here is really big and also very thick. When you scramble chicken eggs, you can crack that into the pan and you can kind of just fluff it up with a spatula. This in the duck egg, the yolk, you actually have to break it apart because it's so thick. Duck eggs are excellent for baking. They're really, really good for binding because they're so big and thick, but we still use both. So today we got one, two, three, four, five chicken eggs, two duck, but it's still early. So we'll, I'll come back out later this afternoon and probably get another four or five. We've been getting about nine eggs a day in the last couple days. On top of the fermented feed the chickens get every day, I always put some dry feed in here just so they have stuff to snack on during the day. All this mud you can see here is from the goats trying to jump up and reach it. They can't reach it with their face, but they still try every day, which is why there's mud everywhere. So later this spring, we plan on moving the goats out of here. They're gonna have their own shelter. They're gonna have their own fenced in area and uh, we'll probably do electric fence for them. That's a project for later this spring. It's just a lot having the goats in here with the chickens. We found that when the goats are jumping up like this and we have chicks in here, sometimes when they come crashing down, they've actually stepped on the chicks. So we don't like that. And also the ducks are laying in the straw here and the goats are laying down on the straw. They end up crushing some of the eggs. It's just better for everyone if we separate it. And also we do have a couple of things planned for this area this summer or spring. We are going to try and separate an area in here and fence it to keep the chicks in. So kind of like mingle with each other and see each other before I let them out because we've had an issue in the past and I'm sure lots of people with chickens know that you can't just introduce new birds into the flock because there becomes a very prominent hierarchy and they pick on the little ones. So just having them separate in here where our older birds can see them regularly until we let them out will definitely reduce the risk of any of the new birds being picked on. Cool. Oh, it's another duck egg. Yeah, I was there the whole time, probably. That's so funny, I just said that. I was like, oh, yeah. they make a nest in the corner. Okay, so let's up our count by one. We got three duck eggs. This is so exciting. We should be able to incubate them soon, then. Yeah, there you go. There's a chicken up there. Got a snack. The, the reason why the ducks are laying in here is because it's it's kind of icy out and muddy out there, so normally they'll lay outside. Normally, yeah, because we have some tires out there, and I usually put straw in there, and then they use the tire as a little nest, and they tend to lay in there, but it's just too icy and too snowy right now, so I'm going to just drop yeah. eggs wherever they want. They prefer it in here. I would too, probably. Yeah. This is Cornelius. He's one of our older roosters. We never did name this guy, but he's the 
He's the top dog right now. And then we have another one who looks just like him. His son. Yeah, his son. This guy's only like six months old. So this guy here, he was actually raised at the same time as uh, the ducklings that we had. So he spent the time running around the yard, always hanging out with the ducklings. Uh, he basically thought he was a duck for a long time. <laughs> he would even try to mount the ducks, believe it yeah, or not. he was doing that for a while. Yeah, he was. But yeah. he stopped doing that, but he still sometimes will like mingle with a pile of ducks. Yeah. And this is Penny. Penny's actually pregnant. Like Jeff was saying, Penny is pregnant. I know she looks really small, but she's actually two and a half, I think, two and a half years old. She's just super tiny. She's had one kid already, so this would be her second one. Yeah, she's definitely firm in there. Very firm in there. She should be due any time now. She definitely hasn't come into her milk yet though, but she'll be due sometime soon. She's got a horn too, actually. Yeah, just one little. Oh, I like how soft she is. She's a softest one. So this is Carmen's baby. When we bought Carmen, she came with Penny. Actually, we got the two of them as a pair. The uh, owner, previous owner of Carmen didn't really want to let just Penny go. So she's like, will you take the mother too? And we said, sure. And then uh, we later picked up Vinny here. He's our male. He stinks. He always stinks, yeah. If you don't know anything about goats, male goats pee on themselves as a way to sort of like seem attractive to the females. But it's it smells pretty bad, actually. And out in the yard, if you're downwind, you can smell it from anywhere on the property. Yeah. It's actually really bad. It's very strong. But he's a nice guy. Yeah. Vinny's horns are a little bit messed up because whoever the vet was before that did the disbudding, they didn't do a very good job and they actually took forever to grow in. He was getting these little nubbins that would come in but they would fall off and now in the last probably like, I don't know, I guess the last year they've actually grown into these sort of misshapen horns. Hey dude. As you can see, Carmen has her horns. They should look a little bit more like that. chickens are wearing bracelets I'm not sure if anyone noticed that but if you did there is a reason so all of the chickens that are wearing bracelets are the newest ones that we have so I hatched those late at the end of the season last year they're still pretty young he's only about six months old he's pretty big though but he's actually a nice bird but yeah only about six months old so I'm trying to keep them separate because we'll kind of recycle some of our birds the older ones we could dispatch them and use them for stock or some people around here actually like to buy older birds and keep them as pets. We got rid of uh, probably about 10 last year to someone who wanted older birds as a pet. So these guys will get their bracelets taken off later this year and we'll put the bracelets on the new ones and then we'll get rid of the older birds so just we can keep track of everybody. This guy doesn't have a name either. He's a nice guy. We should name him Frankie. Frankie? Yeah, that's a good name. Thank you. He's the only white bird we actually have. Yeah, I like when they're pretty chill. Kind of a weird, like February. Yeah, but like, sap. I've... What it was running last week. Yeah. Yeah, they are. 
it's already starting to come back. Hmm. Parsley too. This is our garden. We did quite an extensive kind of makeover on this last summer. Every year up until last year, we've always gardened directly into the ground, like so right into the earth. Last year was the first year that we added raised beds because we wanted to try something different and kind of keep everything separate and keep the weeds a little bit more under control. I found it to be way easier last year managing the garden in the raised beds rather than in the ground. Maybe it's just a personal preference, I'm not sure. So after all the work we put into it last year, we added a new garden bed over there between these boxes and that box. There's a row, or quite a significant size row for corn. Then over there we have one for garlic and potatoes and then over here we have onions and strawberries. So we did a lot of work last year adding in a bunch of extra gardens and actually I think there's a couple of videos earlier on in our channel where we put those gardens in. But this year we are making some changes as we do every year. So we're going to add a couple extra gardens this year but most importantly we are fencing this area. We lost a lot of stuff last year. All of our corn we lost to raccoons. We lost all of our potatoes because our pigs got out one day when we were gone and they dug up all of our potatoes and ate them. We had an issue with the dogs running through the strawberries and the onions. So our garlic and onions, we got basically nothing from last year. The strawberries came up okay, but our most important task this season is to put a fence around this garden immediately. We're gonna be adding a couple more boxes like that one back there that's a trellis. It's gonna need some supports in the middle because the snow kind of caved in. But we have a lot planned for the garden this season. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned for all the changes that we have coming up on our local homestead. And now that we're done in the garden, we're gonna go over and do a hive check. So this was our makeshift greenhouse that we got, I think two summers ago. It's taken quite a beat in the last couple of years. Uh, it wasn't tied down very well originally, so some high winds grabbed it, flipped it over, and now all the zippers are busted up. What we did different this year is we put our bees inside there. A lot of people, I guess, leave them out over the winter. Yeah, we tried that last winter. We wrapped them and put them outside last winter, and we actually, our hive did not overwinter, so we lost our hive last year. So instead of wrapping our hive this year, we decided to put it into this greenhouse since it has air flown, it's not close all the way, so there's still a chance for them to come out and do their cleansing flights in the spring and stuff like that when it gets warm. There's actually, you can see a couple of bees yeah, flying, <laughs> flying in there. So we're going to go in and check them out. Oh, there's quite a few bees there. Oh, yeah. I had this thing where I used to be able to get stung and it wasn't an issue, but the last few times I've got stung, I would swell up really bad, so... Luckily, Holly's been doing a lot of the beekeeping, and I've just been doing a lot of the bee supporting. And I've tried to build the frame. So this year, we're going to build a couple more uh, supers for our beehive. But and we're also getting a new hive, so we're going to have to build a whole new hive. So we're adding a second nuke. Yeah, I forgot we're getting another. You ordered another nuke, didn't you? So you yeah. can see here, there's a dead bee here. There's another dead bee down here. There's actually tons of them in the grass, and outside of the greenhouse they're all over the snow so the bees have been coming out and doing their cleansing flights dropping off kind of the dead bees that didn't make it over the winter and just kind of stuff in their hive that they don't need at first it looks a little bit alarming because when you're walking outside in the snow there's bees everywhere and it looks like we've lost our whole hive but as you can see we have not lost our whole hive because they're they're all flying around in here normally we kept our uh, hay and our straw in here but this year the bees are sharing the space it looks like maybe a mouse nest or it was a mouse nest or was that in the... No, that was the thing that you would use for smoking. I didn't use that. that Not dryer lint? No, 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 no. Yeah. Something you made a nest. A rodent nest. All right, let's get to the hive. I'll be happy if I don't get stung. <laughs> Oh, it's really, really warm in there. Holy. Let me take the top off. And the bees are pretty, they got a Superman pillow. It's yeah. Nice. So I put this on top this season, which we've never done before. It's a pillowcase full of shavings, and we use it to kind of moisture wick and take some of the moisture out of the hive. And it seemed to work well. I mean, all of our bees are, look at them. This is so exciting. Yay! I'm not going to disturb them. I'm not going to take the whole hive apart and do an actual like thorough spring infection or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to 
pop the lid off and make sure that everyone was doing okay. And it looks like they are. This is so exciting. It was very, very tragic when I opened the hive last spring and every bee in there was dead. So this is like, this is awesome. It's They're good. alive. It's good Oops, news. Oh no, get away. I'm just gonna pop this queen excluder off and then you can zoom in because there's quite a bit of honey in there still. Okay, I got stung in the face. Okay, so I got stung in the face. <laughs> um, that, I never usually wear the hood around this time of the year, like my full bee suit or anything, because they're usually, they're usually pretty docile. But uh, I guess I'm disturbing their house and they don't like that, so I got stung in the face. And then when I exited, there was a whole bunch stuck inside my hood. So I got stung in the leg, I got stung on the head. There were bees everywhere. There was one stuck in your hair we couldn't find. There was one stuck in my hair we couldn't find and I had to take off my sweater and take my hair out and Jeff had to pick it out of my hair like a monkey. So, I think we're done here for today. It's safe to say the bees made it this winter and they are looking strong and healthy. I'm getting out. <laughs> Within the next week to two weeks, we'll be moving them outside of the greenhouse and we'll put them back where they were, which was just over here. We had a little platform for them and they were over there. And then we'll put the other nuke further down the line from them. But we plan on planting some sunflowers and other wildflowers over there. I don't want to keep them in here too long because the weather is getting warm. But looking ahead, we have more temperatures going down to about minus 15 by the weekend. So it's still a little bit early, I think, to take them out. But definitely the next few weeks, we'll move them back out into the yard. And then we get our new nuke the first week of May. So lots of stuff to get ready before then. So it doesn't look like it now, but this is where the goats are going to go. We're gonna set up a little area for, for them here. And then they're gonna have a three-sided shelter, which most goats um, usually are in. Yeah, they don't need four sides. Three sides is good. They have lots of hair and then we put some straw in there. As long as it's facing away from the wind, it'll be fine yeah. for, the, for the winter. The reason the grass is so long here is because at the end of the season last year, we had planned to put the shelter up and move the goats before winter came, but we ran out of time. Too much was going on. We had firewood to split and stack. So we kind of left it to the spring, which is why this is so long. We had left it long because when we plan on moving them in there, it would have been lots of fun to eat. Yeah, I'm not going to cut it either. I'm just going to leave it as is once we put the fence around it. Just need to kind of clear a little bit of area to build the shelter and then they'll be good to go. And we'll move them out this year. So. Yeah, it's very exciting because everyone will have their own space and it'll be good, it'll be good for everybody. And then even when they're all separate, it, the upkeep is easier for each set of animals, right? The chickens are going to need to have their their, uh, their coop cleaned as much, you know, because of the goats making a mess in there. So it'll be easier for us, it'll be better for them, and it's again another win win for everyone. We had a really weird winter this season where we got pretty much no snow until December here, but then at Christmas, the snow was so bad. Basically, everyone was snowed in for like three days, and the highway was closed, and the stores were closed, and it was a giant mess. But in that time, this took a whole lot of weight of snow and is now sagging down, as you can see. So we'll have to repair this in the springtime and get this ready because we plan on putting the beans and the peas in here so they can kind of crawl up. Using the trellis helps the plants get more air and pollinate better and just not lay on the ground and not get rot. So that's why we put this in. We're gonna put a second one in as well, but definitely do some work on this first. This is not looking good. My original design was to put a piece of like a PVC conduit from this one and just have it kind of bent and go over and just for the three it would support the weight of all the, the vining and like the growing vegetables because once they start growing up there and heading up here there's going to be quite a bit of weight so definitely need to reinforce this but i don't even think i don't know they only climbed up probably halfway last year yeah this is a new box and it didn't like it didn't really get all the attention that it deserved i didn't fertilize it as much and it was harder to yeah. water because the water didn't reach back here with the hose and the sprinkler anyway so this this needs some attention this year and this is also a priority because beans Beans and peas are important to us and I like to pickle beans every year and I want good harvest of beans so we are definitely going to be doing some work on this this year and yep. ideally putting in a second one because I want one for uh, melons and stuff like that because they also benefit from growing upwards. Lots of work to do. Got to get the most out of our crop. Yeah. <laughs> most out of our time and energy. Yeah. yeah. We're going to visit the garlic and see if we have any sprouts coming up. This is our corn pack that we put in last year that I'm messing all over. It needs some work next year because last year was the first year that we used this. So we tilled it up. Did you till it twice? 
I toiled it at the. Beast. I did till at the end of the year, actually. Did you? Yeah. Anyways, this needs some work. It needs to be fertilized. It needs some compost. It needs some maintenance. We've been saving our chicken bedding over the winter, since actually the end of summer last summer. So, probably trying to incorporate that some of that into it as well. Just lots to learn. Like even when I feel like we've nailed something down, we have not nailed something down. There's just so much stuff to learn all the time when you're gardening, and the only way to do it is by trying it and then messing it up and then trying it again. Yeah. Polly's thumb is way greener than mine. I'm just better at building stuff. So when it comes to the gardening and stuff, I really don't know a lot, but she knows quite a bit. So we rely on her and her knowledge for that when it comes to building these gardens and like what to plant with what and all that kind of stuff. So basically, I just build the stuff. So, but yeah, I gotta build it better than that. My thumb is definitely greener and my forehead is definitely more red than yours. Yes. This is actually throbbing. They got me good. This is the garlic here underneath the straw. Again, another reason we need the fence is when we had hatched those chickens later in the year, they were still small enough to kind of like scoot through the fence a bit. So they were coming out and they were digging this up and basking in it when it was warm, when the sun was shining, kind of picking through the straw and looking for bugs. And in doing that, they uncovered some of the garlic and uprooted some of the bulbs so I had to kind of put them back in last minute at the end of the year so I don't even know how this is going to turn out this year just another reason why we need a fence it's just all this work ends up going to waste basically and I want to get the I'm going to flip the straw over and see if we have any things up probably not it's still early yeah no not yet still early the soil in this garden was actually so great for planting garlic. It was so soft because the pigs had gotten out and dug up all our potatoes and rooted the whole area. The soil was so soft, it was super easy to plant the garlic. Probably the only benefit to them eating all of our potatoes. Did us a service on fluffing up the dirt. Yeah, I wasn't happy with that. I like potatoes. This garden here is going to be our onions. So we planted our onions in here last year bit of an issue with this like I said earlier the dogs are kind of coming through here the chickens are coming through here I don't know if it was because it was the first year that we used the soil and it just it wasn't I don't know it wasn't good we, our onions did not do well at all I used onion shoots that I bought from the feed store like little tiny onions that you plant in the ground which I was thinking that were, they were going to do better but they didn't this year we're starting our onions inside by seed which is a little bit tricky but I'm hoping that they So as you can see, the strawberries are actually, look at that. The strawberries are already waking up for the season. This is our third year with strawberries. So last year I had separated the strawberries. I had split off all the runners and then we took what we needed and we ended up with a hundred strawberry shoots in here or runners or plants. And they seem to have done great. Like they made it over the winter, no problem. Yeah, there's a couple more over Even here. The new ones that I planted. So this is this is great. I don't want to uncover them yet. It's still a little bit early because we do actually have snow in the forecast for tomorrow. So, but yeah. Oh, this is great. The first year you have strawberries, you don't really yield any fruit. So last year was our first year actually getting a substantial amount of fruit. I probably could have made a batch of jam, but the strawberries were so good fresh that we just ate them as I picked them out of the garden. Also have plans to uh, relocate the rhubarb and these small trees. These small trees are apple trees and our plan is to move them over to where we keep the bees so they can help pollinate. Yeah, just kind of keep everything together so we have a little orchard. Yeah, lots of plans this year. Hopefully we can get it all done. We will get it all done. That's what we say every year. So this is where our rhubarb is kept, but there's no signs of it yet. It was covered before the end of the season with leaves and straw. The chickens have got out and took all the straw away. The leaves are still here, but underneath, nothing's coming up yet. It's still a bit early for rhubarb. This will be our third season with the rhubarb once it comes up and all these sticks. We had some serious storms during the winter. It took some trees down, so this is kind of a mess. It needs to be cleaned up. We're gonna move it to a better spot. The rhubarb actually did really well here last year and we got two harvests out of it. And actually, I think I still have a bag of chopped up rhubarb in the freezer. You should, yeah. <laughs> That's your department again. Yes, it is. So hopefully the rhubarb comes back nice and strong this year. I'm kind of on the fence about moving it because if we move it and we have to replant it, then it's gonna take a bit to kind of like get its roots back. We probably won't get as much from it this year. Whereas if we left it here, we'd get the full harvest but this is just not an ideal spot for it. So I think we're gonna have to take the loss this year and move it. So the other day we put up some barbed wire 
Um, we've considered doing it before. We've had the barbed wire kicking around for a little while. You might not believe this, but coyotes actually can scale the fence that is this high. And they have been in here before. They've climbed over the fence in that far corner and got in and got the chickens. So hopefully the barbed wire will help keep out any kind of predators. Our chickens like to fly out sometimes, so hopefully the barbed wire can help keep them inside as well. Also, look, I got one more. That's a really nice blue one. Oh, nice. So now we're up to five plus the three, eight, nine. Nine eggs. Yeah. Nine, but it's still early. I'll still get some more later. This is really nice. I love how blue it is. We're all done outside, so we'll go back in and I will actually show you how to ferment the feed for anyone who's interested in learning how to ferment feed. I definitely recommend it like I said before, for a few different reasons, but if you don't know how to do it and you want to get started, let's take you, because I'll take you inside and show you. So this is where we keep all of our feed and we keep everything labeled and in metal garbage cans. We do live out in the country, so we do get mice. This is a great way to keep them out of your feed. So here we're using our layer mash and we're going to ferment or continue to ferment the feed that we have. If you want to start fermenting feed and you've never fermented feed before, you're gonna add your layer mash to the bucket and then you're gonna fill it up with water. You'll stir it at the end of the day. Day two, you'll stir it again. And then day three is when you'll be able to use it. But because I've been fermenting for so long and we already have fermented stuff in the bottom of the bucket, I don't have to do all those steps. All I have to do is add the dry feed in and then I can use it again tomorrow. So if you look in the bucket here, you can see that I have some leftover feed and a bit of the water. So after you've used the feed and you've fed your chickens, you wanna make sure that you leave some feed in there and some water. So for anyone that does sourdough, it's the same sort of thing. When you take your, your sourdough out and you use it for the day or you discard or whatever you're doing, and then you add new flour and new water to it, you're feeding your sourdough. So that's basically what we're doing here. We're adding new feed to this and new water, and we're gonna feed this so that it can continue to ferment and be ready again for tomorrow. So chickens typically need to eat a third of a cup to two thirds of a cup per bird somewhere in between the two of those. So for us, I usually fill it up to about here once it's all fermented. That's plenty for us, for our birds, because they also get dry food during the day. They also get our scraps from our compost, lots of bugs, lots of worms. There's tons of frogs out there too. So they don't need much more than what we give in this bucket. So for us to get kind of this high, which is what I want, I'll add usually two and a half scoops of this. So that's two, I'll add a little bit more. Yeah, about two and a half. So if you look in the bucket, you can see that it's actually less than halfway full, but once we fill it up with water and the feed absorbs the water, it's going to almost double in size and it will come up to here and that'll be more than enough than we need for tomorrow. When you're adding the water to the bucket for the feed, you always want your feed to be underneath the water. So you're gonna have to check it the first time you do it. I've done it enough times to know how much water to put in it, but the first time that you add water to it, your feed's gonna absorb and you probably won't have enough in. So you have to come back and check. And when you see that the feed has absorbed all the water and there's none left, you need to add more because you need to keep the feed underneath the water or else mold will develop. So it's very important to make sure that your feed is always covered with about a couple inches of water. So we'll go ahead and add the water to ours and I already know how much to add, so I won't have to check mine later. I always like to kind of go around the outside of the pail too and just get any of the leftover bits off. Every so often, maybe once or twice a year, I'll change the pail. And that's just because a couple times it's happened where I haven't had enough water in there and then it gets a hard line of feed here and then not being under the water, like I said, gets mold, and we don't want that. We don't want mold in the feed because that is not good for the chickens. So sometimes, like I said, once or twice a year, I'll change out the bucket and get a new bucket. So that's probably good for us, and you can kind of see the line here from where the feed ends up swelling up to. So it's about here, so that'll be enough water for us. You're also gonna wanna make sure that you have a way to stir it and it needs to have a good stir so that you can incorporate the stuff that was left in the bottom. So the leftover water and the leftover feed, you wanna stir that in so it's all mixed up together nicely to kind of get everything activated. So that's mixed up well. And I'll just go ahead and cover it. I just use an old tea towel. And put that on top and it, this will be ready to use tomorrow morning. 
Now, if this was the first time I was making it and I was just putting the feed and the water in, like I said earlier, you wouldn't be able to use this for three days because you have to let it start to ferment. So you can't, you wouldn't be able to use it right away. The last stop of the day is here at the incubator. So I set these eggs about five days ago. So they're ready to be candled in the next two days. Usually you candle them at one week, two weeks, and then they hatch at three weeks. Right now they're all sitting on these little black rows. This has an automatic turner in it. So it will flip the eggs back and forth every 45 minutes. So we don't have to manually turn them, which is very handy. This little cup of water here with the tubing coming out of it, this incubator in particular has an automatic humidity control system. So when it senses that the humidity is too low in here, it will pump water up this little tube and then drop it down this black spout. And then it goes down the side here and ends up in the bottom of the incubator. I do mine at 50 to 55% humidity for the first almost, well, almost the whole time. Around the last three days when I take the turner out is when I turn up the humidity. So I'll turn it up about 10%. So it should finish incubating at about 65%, which I know is less than most people do. But for us, we've had the best hatch rate doing it that way at 55% to 65% and keeping the temperature at 99.6 Fahrenheit. It's very important in the beginning that the eggs shed a lot of their moisture inside during the first few days of incubation. So keeping the humidity low helps to do that. Having the humidity too high at any point during the incubation process can cause a lot of defects with the birds when they are hatched. They can stick to the shell, they can drown in the shell, they can come up with defects. For us, this is just what works. Our hatch rates last season were in the 90%, somewhere between 90, 94%, depending on what eggs I was putting in here and if the eggs were fertile. So we had great results last season. I didn't check the fertility on these eggs. We'll have to see what happens when I candle them, but our hatch rates have been great for all the fertile eggs that we put in. We keep this incubator in our room in the closet, and the reason that we keep it in the closet is because there's no vent in there, there's no lights in there, and it just remains kind of a constant temperature and lighting, which is perfect for the eggs so the machine can kind of do the rest of the work. So that noise was actually the incubator turning our eggs. Having the incubator too close to a window or a door can fluctuate the temperature and humidity too much inside the incubator. So to keep it kind of a little bit more controlled and stable, I put it in a room where there's no light and no kind of, kind of constant change in heat. So we'll come back to these in a few days to candle them and see how we're doing. That's it for the uh, tour of the homestead and what we're up to this year. So we appreciate you guys tuning in. We're just going to feed the little ones here and we're going to get started on our seeds and we'll call it a day. So make sure you stay tuned for the next video so you can see how we start our seeds and stick around for the end of that video because it will be a little update on how they're doing so far. That's it. Bye for now.